Hello everyone. I am very excited to announce that I do have a microphone on the way finally at last. So um, you all will not have to hear this tinny sound for much longer coming through my stalwart, lovely laptop who has made it through so many years of, of uh, wear and tear and recording for the channel. So shout out to my wonderful laptop. And also for those of you who have let me know that you're not appreciating the sound, I do understand that and thank you for your patience. So a wonderful, oh, also shout out to Liverpool because they're playing today. I'm recording this on the 5th and um, Sala is my favorite. So good luck, boys. Um, little side note, I do enjoy watching soccer. <laughs> there is a psychic medium out there who also enjoys soccer. So yeah, anyhow, good luck to Liverpool. Um, so uh, a wonderful friend of mine had requested that I maybe do like a, a longer video or a series on why I uh, work with certain decks, like my relationship with certain decks and what they, what certain decks have come to mean for me and how I, uh, not, not how I work with them. It's not so much a how to, it's more of a kind of like a, a discussing um, attributes of certain decks slash, you know, the way that they, that they portray for me and how I've come to work with them. So we are, it's cold and rainy here today. So we're drinking hot chocolate and we're going to talk about the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle to start this series off. I'm going to do this as a series because I'm rambly, as you all know about my decks. And I do feel that each deck does have its own beautiful personality. So I want to be able to talk for a little bit more than a couple minutes about why I turn to certain decks at certain times in my life. And, you know, if, if you find that helpful for yourself on your path, if you find that that's helpful information, then that's, that's great too. And, um, you know, my videos are always rambly. So, hot chocolate. Toulouse La Track hot chocolate. <laughs> and um, we're going to start with talking about the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. So the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle is, um, I don't really think that she's for the faint of heart and she's not for a casual reader. So if you feel called to work with her, you kind of have to step into the, I'm just going to adjust the camera here, guys. And I'm sorry about the whiteout aspect with my skin tone. I'm still working with that um, as the weather as the seasons have progressed it's getting a little bit harder to record up here in the light so i do apologize for that too but um she's not really for the faint of heart and she is a deck that has a lot to say she's very wordy even the guidebook um, alana wrote i think maybe her her biggest guidebook ever for this deck sorry guys i just have to sip that while it's still warm um so she wrote her biggest guidebook for this deck, I believe, to my knowledge. I'm a pretty big fan of her decks, as you all know, and so I have almost every deck that she's made up to this date. It's a 260-page guidebook, so this definitely is the most in-depth of her decks, and most of her decks are in-depth decks anyhow. So this is definitely a wordy deck. The guidebook itself is wordy, but also the images do kind of require that you you spend a little bit of time with them. They're beautiful. There are some of the most beautiful images that I've ever seen in an Oracle deck by a very, very gifted and talented artist who I'm going to try to pronounce his name for you. Um, I'm not going to be able to. Wang Zhu Wang. I'm not sure. It's Y-I-G-U-A-N-G. I apologize for mispronouncing that as well. Um, the artwork is just stunning it's it's a deck from a collecting standpoint even a, 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 as far as artwork goes that is one that many i'm sure many people are drawn to just from that standpoint even if you were never going to work with the deck for the purpose with which it was created it's one of those decks that really is just so gorgeous you you have to stop and, and look through the deck itself and so because it's 
such a mouthful because it's such a, uh, an, an, it, not intense and like it's heavy because it's not. It's actually a very joyful, I mean, it's titled Wild. The energy of it is very youthful and curious and open and trusting. But because it's a lot, I think um, for some people it's it's a bit too much for daily, for, for, for daily usage, which I can understand, but I'm someone who actually kind of prefers when decks are wordy. And so for me, this deck has not been too much over the years, but I do understand that for some people, it's a lot. It can be a lot. So if you've kind of not been able to really work with this deck or you've purchased it and just are have it on the shelf or are considered, considering um, trading it with someone, etc., I do understand why that might come up for you. But I want to talk today about how much this deck means to me and, and the, the type of relationship I have with this deck and why over the years I've come back to her and why over the, the, you know, the myriad moves I've had to make over the last few years, she's a deck that I have not gifted or moved along to somebody else and then repurchased. This is actually my original copy of the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle. And um, I, I believe this deck came out the year that I was in the process of ending my marriage. And so I kind of associate this deck with a lot of doing a lot of personal work. And she was very much present for that personal work. So when I turn to the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle, it's because I feel um, alone and perhaps scared, nervous. Um, I might be dealing with uh, depression coming up or something like that. And this deck is really one whose voice is so loving and so but also curious and open and trusting and encourages me to trust and so i turn to her when i need a soft voice but also something that's going to spur me to be proactive in my life so the original kuan yin oracle which is also beautiful and i think very accurately portrays how i experience kuan yin energy um, it's very much a soft space and an opening space, and yet I don't feel the same call to action from daily draws with her as I do from this deck. So, and this is why she will have her own video in this series as well, uh, where I discuss reasons why I choose to interact with her at a certain time and why you might want to if you're struggling with um, bringing her into your practice fully. But this deck is a nurturing deck that prompts me at least to action and so i will go to her when i need to really find my strength push myself through my limits and um, trust that everything is happening the way it is for a reason and i don't need to know the reason i just need to stay in alignment with my path and do my work and trust that all will be ex exactly as it as it is going to be and that that's going to be exactly as it should be. So when I first received or not received, when I first purchased the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle, um, I was struck by the backing. First of all, many of you may know that black and red are kind of like my colors and the backing is striking. She's so, she's this beautiful red with this gold illustration on her. Um, She's just absolutely gorgeous. She's stunning. It, it, but it's not, again, typically what I would think of as Kuan Yin, which would be soft pinks, soft greens, very gentle, kind of like a rose gold tone. And this is the box that the deck comes in. Just so I've actually kept the box because I, I keep my Blue Angel boxes. They're, they're sturdy and they're great um, for traveling, etc. But um, it was a different portrayal of Kuan Yin than I had come up against in my personal practice of working with her. And so I definitely had a learning curve with this deck at first. I was like, mm, this really isn't how I experience Kuan Yin. And yet it, it's the voice of the Divine Mother, I think, speaking with Kuan Yin in this very beautiful, irreverent way, which if we look at Kuan Yin's mythology, the archetype of Kuan Yin we can see that it actually marries really beautifully with her energy and that irreverence being a powerful, like just gorgeous gift um, that to come to, to come into a sacred union with as someone on a spiritual journey, it, it's really, um, 
both clarifying and empowering, as well as just so encouraging of trust, to come back to trust, which can be really scary for a lot of us, especially those of us who have perhaps had, you know, difficulties in our lives that, that cause us to have a, a big fear about sharing and trusting. And so this deck really holds that space for me. Um, and I had to get over that learning curve. It was about like, a, I would say a couple of weeks where I was like, okay, I've got to like reframe how I view and feel about Kuan Yin and allow myself to see her. And I'm going to show you some of the images now as this very young, curious, open, beautiful energy. Like you can see from the card images, they're just so stunning. And, and they really are irreverent, um, empowering, but soft still, curious, childlike. Um, you get this sense of connecting with the elements in a way that's not necessarily human. Like you don't have to be you don't have to be small in order to connect with them. I love this image. The pinks in person in this are just so gorgeous. And so it, for me, required a shift in how I was going to approach Kuan Yin, which actually led to a really beautiful deepening of a practice and relationship with Kuan Yin over the years that now I can approach clients and work with clients in regards to Kuan Yin, not just as unconditional love and compassion, which is necessary, absolutely, but also from a standpoint of curiosity and playfulness and trust and adventure. And that's brought more of a fully fleshed out view of her archetype for me which allows for a more fully fleshed out view of myself as well. And will hopefully do so for you too. Um, I really would encourage you to read the guidebook with this deck. And I primarily work with this deck just for personal work or for very pivotal times on my path. And um, I will then do daily draws with her as opposed to like big spreads and things like that. I really, because the guidebook is so meaty and I like to use the guidebook with this deck, I will just draw one card, sit with the guidebook meaning, sit with the image, journal about that, and then allow that to kind of guide me through my day to serve as a touchstone, as, a, as something that I can come back to, as a talisman on my journey throughout the day. And... When we are in, like when we feel like we're in really dark times or times where we, we are worried that we don't have the strength to do something or we're afraid or we feel extremely alone or lost or unsure of who we are anymore or why we're experiencing something in our life, this deck can be a really beautiful voice to help us reclaim, again, a sense of trust, but also understanding that we're not always going to understand <laughs> And that's okay. As we maneuver, as we move through situations we grow, we learn more about ourselves. We learn more about others, about the world, about the type of person we want to be in the world. Um, you know, we make mistakes, but those mistakes are always something that we can learn from, and so we don't need to feel a sense of shame. And I think this deck is really beautiful for helping you find that kind of root of shame within your being and eradicate that or at the very least start to pull that up um, at the base and look at what's underneath that shame what's causing that shame within ourselves and so this deck for me has really come to hold that space she has a very quiet space she really is the divine mother and i think you really feel that um, and for those of us who are excited because Alana and Jimmy are creating the Kali Oracle, you know, I think this deck, uh, the Isis Oracle, which is and will always be my favorite Oracle decks of all time, um, and the Kali Ma Oracle, the Kali Oracle, these three for me, I think, are really a beautiful fleshing out of the Divine Mother as well as the Sacred Feminine. 
in the way that the Divine Mother can hold the space for whatever it is that you are doing and experiencing on your path. And also um, show us what in, in, a, in, in an empowered way of being, she can embody for us what an empowered way of being looks like. And that is something that is necessary for all of us in, in, in whichever way, shape, or form we choose to identify ourselves in this life. And also that that can shift. You know, you're allowed to grow. You're allowed to change. You're allowed to shift. And there doesn't need to be, again, uh, you don't necessarily need to apologize for that. And I think she shares that message in this deck really beautifully. And so I will go some time without working with this deck. And then I will pull her out. I'll know, like I'll just feel it. It's, it's time to work with her again. Typically things will be happening in my life again that really kind of move me towards hmm, you know, knowing that I'm struggling with something and that I'm having a lot of fear come up. And then when that happens, this deck is really very much a beautiful, oh, she, she's, she like calls me back home. And so then I will pull her out and I have this like almost overwhelming urge to cry when I connect with her in that way because she really does truly really feel like a bomb to my soul. And like, oh my gosh, I've, I've, I've forgotten this piece and now I'm coming back to it in this beautiful way with her. And that's really the wonderful thing about working with decks outside of divination, but also for personal growth on our spiritual paths and connection to deity on our paths. Um, they can really, really hold a powerful space for personal work that can be internal and no less effective in work that we can do with other people and there are definitely times when we should work with other healers and therapists and and people who can hold a space for us to do some deep shadow work then there's also the times when that personal work of the hermit is really powerfully reflected in like really really going within and working with the deck in that way and letting there be a relationship with your deck in that way and this is one of those decks that very Um, carefully kind of sneaks up on you, carefully without being careful, like a little kid who's playing hide and seek with you. And you kind of know where they are, but like they're still part of the game of like being like, oh, I'm surprised by you. And, and I don't know, she just does that really beautifully, keeping some of the most perhaps tragic things you might experience in your life or the most intense things, bringing a levity to that, a sense of being able to find laughter again and understanding that nothing lasts forever. Even the most painful things in life don't last forever. We get to move through those. We will move through those. We will move through an emotion or an experience. It's not going to stay that way forever. It's not staying in stasis forever. That's not what the human experience is about. So this deck really beautifully holds that space for me in my life. And um, if you are someone who's wondering, you know, do I purchase the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle or I I have purchased it, but I'm really struggling with it. I do not use it like I would a deck just for divination. I use this deck for self-work, for self-growth, and as part of my spiritual practice. And in that way, it's proved to be extremely empowering and healing and absolutely worth its weight in gold. It's, it's made a big difference for me on my journey, again, at very specific, pivotal times. And so, like I said, I don't use this all, every, all the time. I use it every day when I'm called to work with her. But when I do feel that call from her, I always listen to it because there's always something that she's going to teach me that it's now time for me to learn. So... It, you know, I would encourage you if you're if you're trying to connect with this deck to go back to daily draws and journaling with her and really see how that helps you to develop a relationship with her and 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 fine tune her voice for you and how your relationship is going to grow over time. And I get a lot of questions about, well, how do I connect with a deck? How do I connect with a deck? How you connect with a deck is by viewing it as a relationship just as you would with a person which means you get out what you put in. 
So the time and energy and attention that you give to that deck is what you get back in a lot of ways. And so if you, you know, you know strictly militarily just working with a deck to, to um, you know, use that for divination and understand something in the future, then it's going to feel very cut and dry. But if you're sharing a journey and really spending time with a deck in this way, as I've just discussed, then you see this relationship become fully fleshed. And then you do understand her voice, his voice, their voice, its voice, whatever you would like to, you know. I, I, some decks are male, some decks are female, some decks are they for me. Um, but it comes back to what you're going to put into the relationship. And so for me with the wild Kuan Yin, there's been a really beautiful marriage that's happened over the years where I know exactly when I need her that she's going to let me know and that then we're going to spend time together and part of our work together is going to be learning about trust. And yeah, I feel really, really blessed that she's in my life and that Alana created this deck with the artist and channeled the messages for us that are so empowering and so loving. And yes, they are long card meanings for each one. You don't, you're not going to read a paragraph and have it. It's going to be a couple pages. But if you can sit with those messages, there is something really beautiful that comes through as far as your spiritual journey and an understanding you can have about why you are going through certain things and how to access an openness to the experience through trust. So, that is my um, personal experience with the Wild Kuan Yin Oracle thus far. And I'll be looking for more videos in this little series. And um, yeah, thank you all for watching. It's been, I don't know, it's like something about November kind of been like reviewing. And it's been like a really, really long time that I've been making videos on here. And it's, it's, uh, it's a blessing that, you know, that you guys watch. So thank you all. As always, I'm sending you much love and many blessings, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.